a very good evening to all of you and a big welcome to the next webinar which is de stress in times of uncertainty change is an instrument of progress par excellence perhaps it is the most it's one of the best instruments of change yes when we don't anticipate change right we don't anticipate situations and a situation like this which has been unprecedented and has caught us all unaware of what is happening around us we are all in a state of uncertainty we are in a state of what's going to happen next so in this situation there are a lot of lessons one is learning from mother nature and the one of the most important lessons or one of the most uh, beautiful lessons which i am learning or i have learned is that all of us have to realize that mother earth needed this rest as human beings we have been interacting with ourselves a lot and less with the harmony which mother earth has provided us or mother earth needs so i think this is a process of healing for mother earth and needless to say after this phase of rest i sure that we will get back to the harmonious collective stay or united stay which we we'll look at as being a part of the earth and not owning the earth not owning the universe which we are doing so this incident has cast a lot of uh, different changes in various uh, spokes of the wellness wheel uh, the most important part where the part of wellness which is affected is the emotional and mental health the emotional and mental <laughs> being of each individual is definitely at stake because of the different feelings which all of us are going through and we have a group of eminent panelists most beautiful panelists i'm really really honored to have both of them i introduce you the first lynn geddes she's a retired community educationalist she is a cognitive behavior therapist she is the director of an addiction agency has done lot of work in de addiction she has over 30 years of experience in holding various management positions she has been at the director level for over than over 15 years she is a yoga teacher from the international yoga society she is a counselor she is a training development worker she is also a also a part of our global training team for heartfulness and most beautiful full of side of her life is that she is a grandmother of four children welcome lin namaste my next panelist wow i am really really honored to introduce her dr raji borat pura thakur dr raji borat thakur she is a founder and ceo of terra blue xt uh, my wonderful friend is a globally recognized innovator with 20 plus years of it experience she has been awarded by the prime minister of india and also so by the government of australia she is one of the 12 women transforming india by united nations and niti ayo she is one of the top global women entrepreneurs by axa insurance her innovation is amongst the first three innovations she tops the list in india intel and dst government of india and so on her special interest lies in establishing meditation especially for for those who are suffering from anxiety depression and pain she practices meditation and she her domain is to provide meditation a very scientific basis which it needs in today's world welcome both of you thank you thank you so when we are looking at today's scenario and when we look at whatever is happening around us uh, there is a lot of uh, the word stress is used very commonly uh, i would like to understand from lin what is this stress what all about what do we feel i mean what what does it actually mean the fear the uncertainty the frustration the anger what does it actually all convey can you please uh, enlighten us upon this lin sure um the, the important thing i think to share with you is that stress is a, it's a perfectly natural response it's a natural response in every human being 
to the process of fear, uncertainty, all of these negative ex things that we're experiencing at this point in time. And it's whether or not it's real. So whether we think we're in fear or whether we actually are in fear, it still triggers off the same response because the mind doesn't know the difference. And it is a chemical reaction that has an effect on your body. So it's pretty unique to each individual, depending on your own chemical makeup. The common analogy that's used is, is a fizzy juice bottle. You know, and, and if, you, if you replace a human with a fizzy juice bottle and you shake it up, that, that would be a stressor. And then later on in the day, it gets shaken up again and again and again. And this, the amount of stress that we undergo determines what happens when you undo the cap at the end of the day. Now, we're all in very small confined spaces. So, uh, you know, opening a bottle and having a volcanic eruption is, is something that we really want to avoid at, at all costs just now. Um, so what we are going to do in, in, is share with you, Ra Raji and I are going to share with you some ideas and some techniques that, that you can actually just sh 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 and, and release the pressure, release the gas in the bottle throughout mm -hmm. the day in, with a range of different tools and techniques so that we don't have this volcanic eruption, you know, that, that leads to some horrific things happening, the you know, domestic abuse, Drug, drug addiction, alcohol use. You know, we want to avoid all of that at all possible. But what's really important to begin with is that whatever you're feeling at this point in time, it doesn't matter how high your stressors are. What is important is that you are actually aware that you're okay. Because if you tell yourself that you're okay, your brain thinks you're okay and the stressors drop down. Now, if you get frightened and scared and, and it's all in your head, that will put the stressors up. And the stressors up actually lower your immune system. So in this particular time where we've got to be very careful, we've got to look after ourselves, we need to keep ourselves healthy and clean and, and with all the hand washing and all that kind of stuff, we also need to keep our mind in a very positive frame so that the stressors stay minimal and our immune system can fight anything, even if we catch it we can fight it. So, so that's, that's really important. Um, yeah. And some people will manage it well. Some people will manage this lockdown very easily. And, and some people will, will have a very difficult time. It, it doesn't matter. The important thing is not to judge yourself against others. To be aware of everyone that you're living with in the family as well. Because the effects that you have on other people are also going to be stressful or could be stressful if we're not careful. So the, the whole family unit really needs to kind of stay in that positive frame if you can. I mean, some people will sail right through it and then at the end of it, when everything's passed, they may well have a, a traumatic reaction later on. So whatever it is, whatever you're feeling, however you're managing, it's okay. It's really important that you feel okay about it. Thank you, Lynn. So you're suggesting that uh, when we are practicing the hand washing, the hand hygiene, the physical hygiene, the social distancing, we mm -hmm. also practice something what you call as a mental hygiene. Yes. Uh, and this is the seven seminar or this webinar is all for looking at tools and techniques which are available for developing our mental hygiene and developing yeah. that mental muscle, which we all should look at. Uh, mm -hmm. Needless to say, we have enough time to do that on our hands. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to just develop the the need to do that. The need is also felt, I think. It is mm -hmm. the way which we have to train ourselves becomes very, very important. Mm -hmm. So looking at the overwhelming situation which people are facing today, what do you think, uh, Raji, are the effects of the present day situation on the mental well-being of the individual and the society? Okay, so uh, the first thing uh, that we all need to acknowledge is that probably in the first time, at least in my life, the entire world is going through a crisis uh, all at the same time. We are all going through a lot of very negative feelings at the same time. And this is rather extraordinary for us. Our entire lives have been upended. 
and the predominant feeling that uh, we are caught with is what happened what's going on so we know what's going on we are in the midst of a pandemic but we seem to be continuing continue to ask you know what's what's really going on so it tells us that you know all of us were very unprepared for what is going on and there we are we find ourselves in the in the midst of a storm right now and the overwhelming reaction of everybody to this is something that is to be expected so we are all fearful we don't know what this new pandemic is all about how it attacks people there is a lot of research still going on in the labs so the entire you know how this uh, whole thing pans out is we're very unsure about it so we have very little knowledge of what this disease is how it can get cured there is no vaccine so you know we are all obviously very fearful and uh, we are fearful that our children might get affected we might get affected our our elderly relatives and parents might get affected so there is a little bit of fear in all of us right now so that is common so the next thing i guess we are all dealing with is the amount of uncertainty we never expected this to happen never in today's uh, day and age when we have so much advancements in every area that you look at and suddenly we are with cities completely locked down governments immobilized and you know everything you know happening just crazy in front of our eyes so it makes us realize that life is very very uncertain so that has come to the fore you know the fact that everything could be very uncertain and that leads to questions about our future about our jobs about our health are we prepared for the next uh, you know god forbid but if something like this happens again uh, are we prepared for that how much can we take and so on so that's the other you know uh, area the other aspect of our lives that probably all of us are thinking about so the next thing is so we do know we are caught in the middle of this thing everything seems very uncertain and now we are suddenly having to cope with a lot of new things in our lives there is this fear we are suddenly coping with we are coping with uncertainties about our future we are suddenly we we find ourselves in the midst of our families many of us are working used to being out of home and now we are in close confines with each other now there is a benefit of you know this happening but we are not used to it we so used to our modern lives of you know being away from home not interacting much in fact not knowing how to communicate with our families any longer you know so suddenly we realize that this is happening and we are uh, finding uh, you know we, we suddenly have to start knowing how to communicate with with each other mm. so coping has become an issue it's come to the fore again that how do you cope with these kind of situations so overall there is this whole uh, thing around negativity but what's interesting is that again for the first time ever in my life at least i am coming across this amazingly extraordinarily negative situation but it is this one situation which is giving all of us the opportunity to just slow down you see it's a very negative situation but this negative situation gives us the opportunity to make the course correction and now is the time if we want to do this now is the time that we were looking for and which was in the past we always had excuses we don't have the time we don't know how to do this we don't have resources we, we don't have time to spend with our families and so on and suddenly we have all the time to spend with our families like it or not right so it it's all it's all very different so i would say that yes there is a lot of negativity it's important to acknowledge this it's important to acknowledge that we are fearful and it's important to acknowledge that things are not okay and the moment we know that things are not okay then we prepare our minds to go forward into the future with more courage and hope that it's not okay right now but it is going to be okay tomorrow and i need to prepare myself for it so that's that's my answer to your question 
Yes, I, I, I would echo with, with you there, Raji, you know, that there would be something wrong if mm -hmm. we're all feeling wonderful just now. Right, yes. There would definitely be some, something wrong with us. And, and you know, immediately we want to kind of make it better. Yes. You know, and, and slowing down certainly is, is one of the things. You, all, you also talked previously about breathing and things as well. Yes. Like this, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we're going to speak about it in, I think she, she is going to, we're going to talk about coping and stuff in more detail. So definitely we can talk a little bit more about the coping strategies and Lean, you have a lot of coping strategies in your hands too. So it will be great to hear from you about how we could do better in these circumstances. So yeah, well, yes. Yeah. Addiction, addiction certainly gave, gave um, the opportunity to develop lots of different coping strategies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sorry, even yeah. what are the tools and coping strategies you can? Yeah. Okay, so we are having this monkey mind. You know, we love to jump from one place. So yeah. the mind is never. It always is either chattering or jumping. Mm -hmm. And now it has got a big boss. Oh yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And and I think it's important that to to acknowledge as as you say. That you know that, that people will deal with it differently. Some people yeah. will love being at home with their families. Mm -hmm. you know, and other people will be sitting in the cupboard saying, go away. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, who are you? I, I don't know my family. Who are these people? I mean, I, I, I'm totally on my own in the middle of nowhere up in the north of Scotland. And that actually works for me. I think if I was in a little flat with all of my relatives, I'd go crazy. I, I, I would definitely go crazy. But um, it's also important to acknowledge that, that, you know, that within that kind of setting, mm -hmm. that men and women deal with these things differently. Mm -hmm. so, so that's another thing that we need to be really aware of. Guys like to solve problems, whereas mm -hmm. women like to be listened and talk themselves through problems. So mm -hmm. it's important that they have the opportunity to chat and to share. And, da, da, da. and for guys, it's important that they, that they can problem solve and achieve something. Mm -hmm. so, so there's those kind of dynamics that, that, that we can spend longer on in other in other sessions if, if we choose mm -hmm. to. But there's there's one particular um, very simple thing that I'd like to share with you at the moment, and this is a this is a a, a little tool um, that we use um, in in the addiction field. And and I just want you to focus for a moment on this blue circle. The idea of this mm -hmm. is that it just kind of quietens the mind just a little bit. So you, you just just have a look at it for a moment, and then I'm going to show you something that's written underneath the blue circle, mm -hmm. and I want you to just read it, um, not think about it, but just read it, mm -hmm. and and we'll see. I'll, I'll explain what happens there. Okay, so just take a moment to look at the blue circle, and now if we can put the wording up, I'd like you to read what's underneath it. Do you want me to read that, Lynn? Yes, now. What, what are you seeing? Oh, let me see. Don't I, it, yeah, I'm nowhere. You're it nowhere. Is, I'm nowhere. Nowhere. What about you, Raji? I think uh, I see the same. I am nowhere. Okay. Okay. Yes. What that tells me is that you are currently in a negative frame in your mind. Oh my dear. I mean, that's a pretty negative experience mm -hmm. of, or feeling that you're sharing mm -hmm. some people may well be reading i am now here mm -hmm. that's great yeah Can you see that? yeah mm -hmm. and that tells me that they're in a positive frame of mind mm -hmm. so without even thinking about it you can very quickly at a glance determine whether you're in a positive frame or a negative frame mm -hmm. And this is a natural thing that happens in your body all of the time. It's, it's mm -hmm. to do with the negative and positive eons that we breathe in. Mm -hmm. And that's why we were doing alternate, a uh, single nostril breathing in the other webinars. When you breathe in and out through the right nostril, mm -hmm. that makes a very positive effect on your body and calms the chemical stressors down. Mm -hmm. So if you notice that you're in a negative frame, you can click the switch and move into a positive one. Mm -hmm. like you can stick, you can draw a wee circle and write that on a post-it. Mm -hmm. Stick it on your fridge or 
or above the mirror in the bathroom, somewhere or other. But the, the thing is to, to check it every check it every couple of hours or every mm. hour even, because this shift happens every 20 minutes approximately. It's, mm. it's a natural biological reaction to the positive and negative eons in our atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll notice if you've ever got a cold that you'll have one nostril will be more blocked and then the next time it's the other nostril. That, that's mm -hmm. just an example of how that shifts. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural response, but you can adjust it. Mm -hmm. You can go and find something to move you into a positive frame. And, yeah. and, and there's, there's a lovely cartoon that, that's done by Peanuts. Um, and it's little Charlie Brown sitting and he's sitting, he's speaking to his little pal Snoopy and he's going, oh no, someday we're all going to die. And mm -hmm. little Snoopy says, oh yes, yes, that's very true. But all the other days we're going to live. Mm -hmm. And that immediately takes you from one to the other. It's mm -hmm. finding the pearls in amongst all the shells. Lovely. That's, that's, that's what's yeah. unique. Yes, that's that's lovely, Lynn. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a wonderful tool. That's a very simple tool. Very but, simple, uh, yes. wonderful tool. So, in, in yeah. addition to the left nostril breathing, which was mentioned by Dr. Jay in the last mm. webinars, I think this can be a, another tool which we can use to reduce mm. our mental or maybe to uh, sort of say, okay, this is the load which I want to remove from myself. Mm -hmm. My mental well being can be established. That's, mm -hmm. that's really wonderful. Yes. So when you're looking at uh, connecting with what we are here mm -hmm. and actually what we are as human beings comes mm -hmm. from the values which mm -hmm. uh, come from our heart. And yes. at, at, when there's a paradigm shift like that, at situations mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. we really need to understand which are the values as a human being which are needed to nourish mm -hmm. and cherish oneself mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. the society. Can you speak a little bit on that? Sure. Shall, shall I go again then? Yes, Lynn. Okay. Yes, Lynn. Okay. So, um, well, once once you've once you've managed to get into that kind of frame of mind, you, you what you really want to be doing over a period of time, because it's not going to happen overnight. You have to kind of become aware of yourself. You really have to kind of listen to what the family are saying to you. They'll know when you're getting stressed because they know you, and they'll go, oh, oh, it, yeah. You're getting a bit loud there. There's something happening. Da, da, da. You maybe need to try and find something that makes you feel a bit better so that you reduce this chemical reaction in your system because it is just a chemical reaction. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. So learning to, to notice when you're getting stressed is a, is a very, very important key. And then you find something that works, something that reduces that level, something that you enjoy. Um, you find something that works and you just do more of it you know so if watching horror movies frighten you don't watch them mm -hmm. you know it's you know, sitting going through the news reels about covid and how many people are dying you know, if that scares you don't do it find something else you know, watch something that makes you happy or don't watch at all read a book spend some time with the children color in there's a whole plethora of things to do um, that are on the web and things that, I mean, there's just tons and tons and tons of stuff and people are offering classes and courses all free uh, in this time because it's a global problem. Mm -hmm. So everybody is in the same boat. And, and that's, that's the other thing I think, you know, we're all pigeons in the same place because we all have to manage it. So we really have to work at being helpful with each other. And it's that, inner values that are important. Mm -hmm. I had a, a lady who, who had stressors up to here in terms of her addiction and her lifestyle and she ended up in prison and da da da. But she said something very profound in a book that she wrote when she got clean. And what she said was, who you are is in here, in your heart. And where you live is in here, in your head. So I'm going to say that again. Who you are is in here. And where you live is in here. So irrespective of what comes out, remember that of the bottle, mm -hmm. who you are is in there 
and is a very beautiful divine being. Where you live, irrespective of whether it's a tiny little flat in Delhi or in a big estate up here in Scotland, doesn't matter. It's what you think about it that's important. What you think about being in that place. So who you are is here and where you live is here. And there's a range of tools that, that heartfulness offer in terms of gratitude. There's a gratitude journal. I don't know if you want to talk about that, Raji, or not. Um, sure, I can. I can speak about that. Yeah. I think Raji so, also has some uh, uh, tool which she helps us to read what we are, to yes. read our mind states. Of course, we can have a different webinar on a different day for this. Yeah. But I think Raji, that's worth a mention that how you actually know what we are thinking. And she mm -hmm. says, hey, I'll be joyful, come out of yeah. it, you know? Yeah. And just so, that here. Sure, thanks a lot. So, uh, so what we have is this, uh, you know, device called Shant. It's a proprietary artificial intelligence based technology. And uh, it is, it's job, so it's a wearable device. Uh, it's a medical grade wearable device. So you wear it and it measures the autonomic nervous system. Mm -hmm. And we have fine-tuned it to the point where we are able to understand the emotions that, that are going on. And Lin, you did mention that right now I might be feeling a bit negative. And mm -hmm. uh, now that is a subjective assessment. But if you measured me, you might see that, yes, she is in level X. You mm -hmm. know, she's that. And if you know that, if you know that, then you can help me to come out of that negative frame of mind. And suppose you were giving me a breathing exercise or some kind of an exercise to do so that I get out of it. You get to see whether that is working or not. Mm. So the tool helps you to, the device that we have helps to understand the states of mind objectively, helps us to measure traits or the long-term behavior change, and also helps to put people on a path of positivity and recovery. Lovely. Excellent. Lovely. Yeah, and uh, so the tool is not out in the market. I can talk about the science behind it in some other webinar, but I would like to speak about a little bit of the things that you could do without a measuring device. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm sure you are aware of it, but I just, I, I'm just reiterating it so that people, our viewers have that in mind. So the first thing, you know, not, you know, that is something that I am practicing because of the situation. The first thing is to remember to be practical. There is, there is no point in giving in to the fear right now. We have acknowledged that we are fearful. We know that we are fearful. And we know that we have got to get out of it, right? But what we need right now more than ever is to invoke the sense that we, we need to be able to look at things in a very practical manner till the time that we keep ourselves from doing all the wrong things, like for example, not maintaining social distancing, mm -hmm. not washing our hands or, you know, so we are more likely to get these kind of diseases. So at least what is practical is we can, we can, we can be disciplined with ourselves, mm -hmm. be practical and just be disciplined and try to do the right thing, whatever is possible as per your capacity, do that. Mm -hmm. Don't procrastinate about the bad thing. You never know. You might be able to come out of the tunnel stronger than ever. Mm -hmm. So how about believing, not thinking, believing that you are going to beat this, you are going to come out of it, and you're going to come out of this stronger. Yes, so generally, it, it's just a shift in thought, just like you spoke about the shift in thought with the blue circle, right? I can spend a lot of hours thinking that everything is going to go wrong. Why don't I, you know, be at liberty to dream all the good things right now? What's stopping me? And it's in my head, nobody can see my thoughts. So I can dream as much as I like. I can be the queen. I can be, uh, you know, a big somebody. I can realize all my dreams in my mind. So let's focus on that. Instead of thinking, oh, this is going to go bad, I'm going to go sick, I'm blah, blah, blah. Instead of doing that, let's focus on the positive mm -hmm. things, on the practical things. Mm -hmm. So that would be my first advice. Next thing is about breathing. 
Now, when we breathe, and especially when we breathe slowly, we give the indication to our body that all is well with us. In scientific uh, terms, we are invoking the parasympathetic nervous system. When we are stressed, we, the sympathetic nervous system is up and it tells us that, oh, there is a threat. Now the, your, the right reaction for you is to feel scared and get all sweaty and breathe very fast. Mm. But if we tell our body that, no, look, it's fine actually. And let me mimic this sense of normalcy by breathing slow. So we give the indication to our body that, yeah, indeed, it, it's, it's fine, right? So it helps to normalize us. Slow breathing helps to bring the calmness back into us. Ten counts of slow inhaling, slow exhalation is excellent to ground you. Mm -hmm. And then once you feel a little grounded, go ahead and do whatever works for you. But the initial slow breathing is important. And maybe Lynn or Snehal can maybe demonstrate that in this webinar or in some other webinar, because I do know heartfulness has so many different techniques. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it will be a great opportunity to demonstrate that. So, but it's important. It's scientifically proven to bring down your stress and it's well worth giving a try. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is taking a mental vacation. So, yes, so daydreaming. We, we always grew up learning that, that that's evil and not to be done and what not. That's who. I, I'm not saying that we need to be daydreaming all the time and not doing all the, the work, but we can daydream. You know, once in a while, we can give ourselves the luxury of daydreaming in our heads and thinking that we are in a vacation in the Maldives or some other place which is inaccessible to us right now. And the internet is very handy in these scenarios, you know. We can go on virtual tours and safaris and whatnot. So, you know, so that, that's something that's very useful. And uh, Lean has already alluded to the fact about being grateful. And I think that's the most powerful thing because the very fact that three of us are speaking here, uh, you know, getting together by the grace of the Almighty, we are, we do not have a disease right now. So we're grateful that we are leaving and breathing and having this conversation and bringing it out into the world. There are so many things in our lives that we could be grateful for at this point in time. We're grateful that we are able to spend more time with our family. We are getting to learn more about our children and our spouses. Our body is getting the well-deserved rest and sleep, and we are waking up late. We are snacking more, you know. <laughs> we are we're getting to work. I am I am working in my pajamas all the time, and so these luxuries I couldn't imagine. In a in, in normal in a wow. normal day, right? So, yeah. So just just focus on the positive things that's happening mm -hmm. right now, and let's so all you're really really painting a rosy picture. <laughs> it's, it's a very doable picture, by the way. You yes. Know, it's a, it's so you know what doable. I was doing yesterday i should share with both of you uh, i have a lovely balcony in mumbai having a balcony is a luxury it's a luxury and yeah I, I have never used it to sit and watch and now because everything is so calm and peaceful yes. birds have started coming into my balcony i saw a bunch of mainas bunch it was like three four of them together uh -huh. uh, having a nice time uh, parrots coming so I was just mm -hmm. sitting and watching them and it was so calming it was so wonderful uh, yes. to just be with nature I think yes. the gulmohar tree flowering we yes. like never notice the little joys of life you know? exactly and as human beings we are so used to be especially in a city like Bombay it's like yes. running, jumping the pulse is very different so we are all used to seeing the creative side of what we do, not what nature does. Exactly. Man is used to looking yeah. at all, all these things what he has created. So now you all are giving us another perspective that we can use ourselves, uh -huh. our minds, our bodies to train something which is for our own good or benefit yes. in the 
days to come because we don't know this is this may be just the beginning and we yes. have to change that change has yes. to come from within yes. but it comes only when we see such a destructive picture around us that is the yes. saddest thing we have to see such destruction around so nature mm-hmm. is creative as well as destructive you yeah. see all that in the kitchen then i've seen them playing with legos and then destroying the lego yes. frame yes. and then they are like yeah i did it but yes. when we see such things around we see death all around us it yes. actually brings tears to our eyes we are not able to come to terms to this situation so how do we face this you know this is something which i think everyone around uh, must be having this question how do we face grief how do we look at destruction and have a, a state of mind which can help us balance mm-hmm. and seek something some meaning out of it and learn out of it how do mm-hmm. we do it so uh, if i could uh, you know start and maybe lean will help me out in answering this very profound question so uh, the one thing about death uh, sneha is that it is inevitable that's the that's the most powerful thing about death right so today i could be sitting and talking to you but god forbid i may not be there any longer tomorrow so it is it's a truth it's a constant in our lives it's always there in the background sooner or later we are all going to face that so just like uh, every other thing that's happening uh, with us because of this uh, covid-19 we have to take uh, debt in the same perspective that debt is going to happen maybe because of this new pandemic that we have or it may not happen when we go out when we wake up every day we don't wake up thinking that we are going to die we wake up thinking that we are going to leave in today's another day and we have got to get back to our children and our work and our duties and responsibilities so that's what we normally do today tomorrow and the next few days should not be any different it should not be any different it it's just that death has come more into perspective now because too many people are dying because of this uh disease uh that definitely is there but doesn't mean that uh it's going to happen to me right now may happen may not happen in the past before today i've always and i need to continue on for i have control of the fact that i will leave as long as it is possible destiny has been designed by somebody else and it's it's going to happen in the way it's supposed to happen and suddenly everyone's talking about that again now is the time for us to be really very resilient you know be pa remember evolution right we survived to become this so it will take something to wipe us out of this planet that's not going to happen right now at least today it might happen but let's imagine we are liberty to think it's not going to happen now let's think about that let's invoke that inherent strength that we have let's know our strengths and weaknesses let's know that okay this is happening i'm fearful let's acknowledge that fear and then to wake up thinking that the future is going to be worse why why don't we just shift that thought and say okay my future is going to be good now it's going to happen or not i don't know i don't know if the bad future is going to happen or not so while we are the topic of future why mm. not dream of a better future what's stopping us you know yes and and, and, and just to share again to reiterate your mind doesn't know the difference yes. between what's actually happening Mm-hmm. and what you think yes it doesn't know the difference so if you think a beautiful future 
that's what your whole body will be reacting to. Exactly. Yes. Interesting. So yes. when you're talking about evolution, uh, Raji, I, had, I just uh, bumped across a lovely uh, difference between these two terms. Na? Progress. Mm -hmm. Progress means there's always a movement. Mm -hmm. na? There's movement mm -hmm. towards something. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you mean by evolution? There's a gradual, there's an inward development and a progress sort of uh, it is a gradual development of something uh, as you said from amoeba to a human being there is a gradual development and mm -hmm. progress is that we keep skipping jumping going leaps bounds tuck, 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 tuck. yes yeah. so i think when we are looking at evolution and when we are looking at com collective destinies mm -hmm. one as being myself mm -hmm. and one as you me lynn uh, everyone, Purnima and all the universe around me is the mm -hmm. same. And mm -hmm. uh, we all talk of collective destiny. So there's mm -hmm. a, uh, Ubuntu is an African philosophy mm -hmm. which says that I am because of what we are. Right. And could you uh, speak on that, Lynn, and uh, lead us into, give us few thoughts of yours on this philosophy that is, I am because of what we are. Well, again, it's this, this, whole, this, this whole process of thinking um, and habit formation. You know, we get so used to doing things in a particular way and we don't like it when things change. You know, the, the human, as a human trait, we just don't, we don't cope well with uncertainty yeah. and change and all of those kind of things. But it is about also remembering that we are a collective race. You know, mm -hmm. yes, I'm an individual and we're all individuals. But we are, we make up the human race. We have a collective consciousness that, we, that has evolved mm -hmm. globally. And, and, you know, we need to zoom out now and again and remember that, especially when we're sitting in a very confined space with very limited contact with other people. Mm -hmm. You know, if we zoom out and we see it in the bigger picture, it, it kind of takes away a lot of the pressure mm -hmm. when you realize that everybody else is the same. You know, we like, we're a herd creature, you know, we don't uh -huh. like being on our own. It's fearful being on our own. It's, it's, a, it's a natural thing to, to want to be with everybody else. And uh -huh. that's been closed off in some way. Uh -huh. But, you know, when you zoom out and actually realize, wow, uh -huh. you know, we're all connected. Uh -huh. really. And the habits that I have, I can adjust, I can change within, within my own individual setting. And in the addiction field, you know, the, the one thing that, that we, I, we had a little mantra in, in terms of um, habits, the best way to change a habit, whether it's good or bad, it doesn't matter, but the best way to change one is to replace it with another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we are offering the opportunity to try lots of different things to place this, to replace this mm -hmm. way of being, this, this mm -hmm. fearful negative thing that's happened to all of us mm -hmm. into something positive. Mm -hmm. For me, my best habit is is to meditate, mm -hmm. and and that really encourages me mm -hmm. to see the bigger picture, to experience that global feeling. In fact, mm -hmm. it goes beyond global; it goes to universal feeling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that actually makes me feel very safe, mm -hmm. and and I can be as bright. I mean, I can be I, I, quite scared actually of all of this stuff that's mm -hmm. going on, and I could go down that road. Yeah. but i know that that does nothing for me uh -huh. make me very sad and feel like a victim and, and and so therefore if i go and i meditate or, or i spend some time mm -hmm. looking at how to get rid of that i become quite a different person and, and i actually feel okay well mm -hmm. yeah i'm still eating like a little piglet and i'll be like a butterball at the end of this covid19 process but that's okay also, you know, because I'm, I'm entitled yes. to my little bit of chocolate. I'm entitled to my coffee and my cappuccinos. And, yes. and so so I'm, I'm nurturing myself physically, mm -hmm. but I also have to nurture my thinking and my soul. My, the me, the real me, mm -hmm. the me that's in here really does need looking after in this time. And it's the one thing for me, mm -hmm. my experience, it's the one thing that just does the lot, you know. It's mm -hmm. my drug of choice, I mm -hmm. have to say. <laughs> There's nothing better for me. So yeah. then what and happens is, 
is that when one meditates a newcomer if we ask a person to meditate mm. uh, if they close their eyes especially in a situation like that uh, you feel scared because mm. you're uh, sort of thinking of the same things what are happening around you or perhaps mm. you're not able to to as you said see the real picture within because mm-hmm. of the stress which is counting on you how mm-hmm. do you remove that stress is there a specific technique to uh, you know detox the stress yeah. and take care of it could yeah. you could you in, well we yeah. have in heartfulness we have a we have a stress detox um, that, and i'm going to do that with you in a moment actually um but the, the, you know again it's that whole thing it's about developing a habit mm-hmm. so the more you do it the easier it gets you know, and we've now got lots of time to be doing lots of different things that we don't usually do. So, so you know, there's a there's a whole opportunity here, and we and we do need. It's a horrible situation, but we need to make the best of it if we can. You know, and one of the best things to do is is this that I'm just going to share with you is is it's called a, a stress and detox in the heartfulness, and I'm going to talk you through it, and then allow a little ten minutes at the end of it for you to actually experience the opportunity that there is to have this connection to the whole world that makes us feel very safe and very held and Mm -hmm. really affirms all of the things that, that, that Raji has said, that we are really resilient, wonderful divine beings and we'll get through this. Mm -hmm. Might be a bit sticky now and again, but we'll get through it. That's for Mm -hmm. sure. So if you're if you're okay, I'll 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 talk you through this um, particular stress detox. It goes along with the the single nostril breathing and the relaxation that that's been shown in in the other um, mm-hmm. webinars. And and this is another aspect to it that you can you can have a practice with at home. Mm-hmm. Shall I just yes. do that now? Yes, yes, Lynn. Okay, so get yourself nice and comfortable. That's 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 important. <clears throat> And then just take a couple of deep breaths. As Raji says, breathing deep really slows everything down and just allows you to get settled. It tells your body that everything is okay. Now, I want you to imagine that the divine current that's above your head is gently flowing down into your body. Draw the current down to your heart. And then let this current move towards your left shoulder. Just visualize this happening. Now allow it to descend down your arm, through your biceps, into your elbow, your wrist into your hands and then all the way out through the fingertips of your left hand. And just allow that to flow through the left arm. And think that the heaviness and the complexities, all of the impurities and the fears that are going on at the moment are being taken out of the system along with this flow along with this current that's moving through that left arm. It's cleaning out. This divine current is cleaning out all of that fears and negativity. Now continue with this for two or three minutes, allowing that whole left arm to be filled up with this divine current coming in through your head, into your heart, and then over the left arm and out through your fingertips. And then allow the process to gently slow down. And again, draw the divine current from your head down to your heart. And this time let it continue right down to your left lower torso, right down through the body, through your left thigh and your knee, all the way down to your left foot and out through the toes of your left foot. Just feel that divine current. And again, 
just think that the heaviness and the complexities, all that negativity and fears are leaving your system with this flow. Again, two or three minutes allowing this flow to remove, to detox your system. Stay with it. Feel it happening all the way down the left side of your body. Again, gently taper the process. Just allow it to slow down. And again, bring your attention once again above the head and allow the current to flow down into your heart and from your heart divert this divine current over to your right shoulder now. Allow it to flow down through your right arm, through the biceps and the elbow, all the way out to your fingertips. It's a very soft, gentle process. Again, allowing this divine current to remove the heaviness, the fears and the negativity all the way out through your fingertips as your left arm becomes full of divine current. However long it takes to just allow that to move all the way out your fingertips cleaning, detoxifying. And then the same for the right side of the body. So again, drawing this divine current through your head, down to your heart, and then over to the right side of your torso and all the way down the right leg through the knees, the ankles, the foot, all the way out through the toes of your feet. Make a particular focus on your right big toe. Be sure and remove all the heaviness and negativity from that right big toe. Allow this current to detoxify to get rid of the heaviness, the negativity, all of it flowing all the way out through the leg with a particular focus on that right big toe. And just allow the process to taper check your body and if you feel the need you can repeat this whole process again one more time if you feel that there's still fear or heaviness in your system you can just repeat the whole thing again but at the end with confidence just affirm that you're completely cleaned of all fears and complexities and that purity and simplicity are restored. Just affirm that to yourself. Now we're going to allow another 10 minutes or so for you to rest, to be aware of your heart and your connection and just to meditate for 10 minutes. I'll tell you when the time's up.
that's all. Please keep your eyes closed for a little bit longer. Just become aware of how you feel. Take your awareness back into the room. Just become aware of where you are and who you're with. And when you're ready, and only when you're ready, there's no rush. Very gently open your eyes. I am now here. Thank you, Lynn, mm -hmm. for leading us through such hand holding us through such a beautiful experience. I hope people enjoyed it and felt that connection. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. My breathing, my heartbeat all stabilized. I felt very aligned throughout this process. I really uh, request each one of you attending today's webinar to try this mm. stress detox and meditation just to align yourself and also to use the mental muscle which is with us, that is our mind. Mm. Needless to say, I think it has been a wonderful journey with both the speakers and I look forward to having Raji again and Lynn again because stress is one of our subjects which needs a little bit more of hand holding and attention. So when we walk through the next path, through the next journey, let us look at what other uh, offerings Heartfulness has. And if you have any queries, uh, questions, you, or you want to locate your nearby meditation centers, you are free to look at www.heartspots.heartfulness.org. We have 6,000 heart spots from 130 countries. And the website is www.heartfulness.org. So this is a hearts app which is always with you on your mobile. You can just log into the app. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of features which this app has. Mm -hmm. Just download it from your Play Store and you can meditate anytime, anywhere. We are also, we show our presence on YouTube. It's Heartfulness on YouTube. There are free online meditation classes, guided practice sessions, Daji, who is our guide, Dr. Kamlesh Ji Patel. There are very short videos of its words of wisdom and much more. We have free three masterclass sessions by Daji on www.heartfulness.org.en.masterclass. So masterclasses are three sessions of meditation as Lynn conducted today. Uh, there is a meditation, there is a second one of rejuvenation and a third one of connection. So mm -hmm. please avail of these three masterclass sessions on the website which is given below. Mm -hmm. In the times of uncertainty, the Heartfulness Wellness webinars have been a wonderful initiative to reach to people of different outlooks to look at what their issues are. So we have had webinars on dealing with the subject on pregnancy, one for children, one we are looking at financial well-being. We had one uh, which was looking at just increasing the social awareness. We have many more which are going to come uh, after our webinar. We have another live cast which has been uh, specially taken forward by our spiritual guide. Dr. Kamlesh T. Patel, connecting heartfully in times of social distancing. Do look at that at again the website which is given below. 
tune into your heart is another session with the management guru adizis which is held and the website is given as given adizis.com we have hello life which is a program which is very specifically kept by our youth for looking at various issues or problems which they face heartfulness has developed a covid relief fund wherein people are contributing heartfully and we do have our heartfulness magazines which are online which you can in a way of whenever you want to so we have a covid 19 relief fund donations are welcome at donations.heartfulness.org and the heartfulness magazine you can see the vit.iy.hfn magazine you can always go online and read it and yes i did mention about the hearts app so with all these plethora of offerings a big thank you to my panelists thank you stay safe and we look forward to meeting you again thanks thank you everybody thanks a lot nehal